So previously we only considered a transformation which just affects the space coordinates. Now let's start looking at something which is going to affect both space and time coordinates. So I'll just postulate the matrix and then we can go through it. Okay, so I've written here a 4x4 four four matrix. It's kind of a block up here and then this is another 2x2 two two block down there. And we can now pretty much just forget about this bottom part of the block because as we saw in the previous example the, the top right corner the one didn't really have any effect on the transformation and so this would be the full four-dimensional transformation but just to keep things a bit simpler now I'm just gonna forget about my other two space dimensions and just consider the actual interesting part of this transformation which is just now going to be affecting the space and time axes so I could have just reduced us down to a 1 plus 1 dimensional space time the effect is the same we're just forgetting about the other two space coordinates which are going to be unaffected Okay, so this is now what I've postulated to be our Lorentz transformation. It has, it does bear some resemblance to our orthogonal rotation, but now we have these hyperbolic sine and cosine functions instead of the regular sine and cosine. And in some sense, now this is, well, this is now representing what's known as a hyperbolic rotation of the space and time axes. So we can see or now start getting a feel for what this is going to do geometrically but before we do that let's just first of all check whether or not this actually is a Lorentz transformation and then once we know it is a Lorentz transformation we can start interpreting it physically so immediately we can realize this condition again our matrix doesn't in any way depend on the coordinates just this new parameter which I've introduced so I'm just going to quickly tell you that psi is just some real parameter. We're not going to have a physical interpretation for it yet, but it is going to be like theta was a rotation angle. Psi is going to kind of be a rotation angle. It's actually going to be a hyperbolic angle. But for now, it's just a parameter. So our matrix doesn't depend on the coordinates. So we have a linear transformation. And now let's check the determinant. Just simply calculate the determinant. We're going to have cosh squared minus cinch squared, which is 1. Just simply an identity. And so yes, the determinant is plus 1. And now finally, we just need to check our, our pseudo-orthogonality condition, the isometry condition. And so if I just write the 1 plus 1 dimensional metric, which is going to be minus 1, 1. And now lambda transpose is actually going to be the same thing because this is a symmetric matrix. So now I'll just write a shorthand cosh. I'm just going to shorthand as C psi minus S psi minus S psi C psi. We have to stick in one of our eta matrices and then another one of these. So rather than and then we simply just need to sub in another lambda matrix. Okay, so then when we multiply these matrices, this one effectively just changes the sign of our top row. And then if we multiply these two matrices together. What we find is minus c squared plus sine squared, sin squared, sorry. Then we're going to have a cosh cinch minus cinch cosh. Same again down here. And then here we're going to have a cosh squared plus a cinch squared. 
So sorry if that's a bit small and hard to read, but hopefully multiplying matrices isn't too difficult. And now we can just realize that yes, that's minus one, zero, zero, plus one. So yes, the matrix we wrote down is pseudo-orthogonal. Okay, so we've now succeeded in realizing another type of Lorentz transformation. So this new matrix that we wrote down, remembering it has a, its block part, this is now also a Lorentz transformation. And so we're gonna have, or we're gonna spend the next few videos coming up with a physical interpretation for this transformation. But I just want to kind of briefly give you the overview of what this is gonna be. We've essentially seen that one set of Lorentz transformations, which we had with these orthogonal space rotations, i.e. some kind of transformation that only hits space components, so it's only transforming between space components. But now this new lambda matrix that we've found isn't only looking at space components, it's actually transforming time and space. Because quite clearly now, if you just simply do this multiplication, your new set of coordinates is going to be cos psi ct. So again, I'll shorthand the cos is just a c. So c psi ct minus sinh psi x. And then here, minus sinh psi ct plus cos psi x. So we should realize these, these are our new coordinates. So this is the C T hat and say the Y coordinate of the new frame. And so what this transformation is kind of doing is it's mixing up these time and space coordinates of the old frame into the time coordinate of the new frame. And so in some sense, you can think of this Transformation is effectively a rotation, not an orthogonal rotation now, but what's known as a hyperbolic rotation. A hyperbolic rotation of these time and space axes. And we should realize that the new time coordinate is going to have some contribution from the old space coordinate. And it's this mixing of the time and space components by this kind of transformation, which it never happens over here with orthogonal rotations. The time coordinate of the new frame is just purely the time coordinate of the old frame, but somehow the new space components are mixed up. But here with these hyperbolic rotations, this is not the case and the new time coordinate has some space component from the old coordinates. And so we're gonna get physical, nice physical interpretations for all of these things shortly just already starting to point out that there's something quite non-trivial going on with this kind of a transformation in that it's effectively mixing time and space as we do the transformation. So we're going to see and we're going to start calling these transformations boosts or Lorentz boosts and the terminology boost I don't really like it too much but it's just what we have to stick with because what we're going to realize is that this transformation is going to take a reference frame and it's going to transform it to a reference frame that is now moving with some velocity relative to our original reference frame. So we're going to be able to derive, if we take x to be stationary and we perform a Lorentz boost on this stationary frame, the new frame that that produces is simply going to correspond to the frame that would correspond to an observer that would be seen to be moving in this X frame. So don't worry if that doesn't make sense now, I'm going to spend quite a lot of time 
going through and deriving that, but now just introducing you already to the idea that these new type of transformations that, we're, that we've discovered, they are going to be a way that we transform between moving reference frames. And so in future videos, we're going to derive a lot more of the properties that Lorentz boosts, or not really properties, but just the effects that this Lorentz boost transformation induces. So in summary then, we derived our conditions in previous videos, and now we just simply postulated some forms of Lorentz matrices, and we went through and verified that all of these conditions are satisfied. And so we found that one set of transformations that we kind of already knew about are Lorentz transformations, so orthogonal rotations between space axes are Lorentz transformations. And then we also found that we have this new set of transformations, which are very similar to orthogonal rotations, but they're now pseudo-orthogonal, or hyperbolic rotation. And we've seen that this is now a rotation or a transformation between space and time, and that these new space and time coordinates are going to somehow be a mix of the old time and space coordinates. And so I briefly kind of mentioned that this new type of transformation, which is known as a boost, is going to take a stationary frame into a moving frame. And so we're going to spend the next few videos deriving or arriving at physical interpretations for all of these quantities.